doesn't really occur in high concentrations in cows that are fed on grasses. So range-fed beef, no E. coli problem, usually. Um, some of it's a slaughtering house issue too. But you know, by and large, no problems. When they put them on the feedlot, within two weeks of being fed on grain, the pH of the rumen changes, and those cows, that, that strain of E. coli takes over. It's, it's bad for the cows too, it's not, a, it's not something that has ever been here really historically. Uh, the way it is. So it's, it's feedlot beef. That's the problem. And then, you know, that effluent washes down in the field or they'll spread it. They use a manure spreader to spread that on the fields. Um, and then you have, uh, you know, people getting sick and dying from E. coli. And these systems, that's never a problem. We don't use warm-blooded animal waste specifically. You know, so in our system, by using fish waste, it's a cold-blooded vertebrate, you know, that the issues with E. coli are, they don't exist. I usually, when people come to my greenhouse, I'll get a cup of uh, water out of my system, I'll drink it, to show them how safe the system solution is. You know, it's, I've, I've never gotten sick off of my system solution. It is, it's bi biologically active, but it is so diverse, um, and it's such a healthy ecosystem, that it's, you know, human pathogens just, they can't flourish, they can't survive. There's too many competitors.